Uh, hello, everyone. I'm the uh, I'm founder and CEO of Artblock. Um, so in this DIF Hackson, we are fortunate to have two sessions uh, because basically uh, we have a lot of things to show off. Um, to, today is a first session. So today, basically, uh, I'm just going to walk through uh, with you um, how Artblock uh, use DIDs. So uh, different from a lot of um, other uh, uh, players in the DID world. So uh, our block are very much focused on the real world application usage. Um, so uh, this is like the principle when we build our block, we, this is the principle that we always want to uh, is seeing is believing, right? So uh, we always want to uh, do something uh, to start with uh, some um, live demos. So I'm going to give a very quick live demo and the, to show what uh, we have built and how we use the IDs. So hopefully you can see the screen. Yes, good. Um, so I just to use, uh, just for simple, right? I just to use uh, our website uh, for a very quick demo. So this is the Artblocks website. It looks like normal, it look, just look at like usual website you see. Um, but I want to say that everything our block um, used, include our website, our user community, uh, is actually building on top of our own platform. Uh, it is a decentralized apps, um, and it used decentralized identifiers as all the IDs of the users, accounts, and components, and it used verifiable credentials everywhere, right? So I just show a very quick use case, uh, and on the right side, that's my uh, that's my cell phone. Uh, so I just uh, show you how I log in into our website. So I click this kind of little you know, user button here. Um, so it's very quick. Then it bring up a window, and the windows, uh, you know, like a lot of people get used to, like uh, Google's. You will see I already have one of the session I can I use before. I can quickly use that to log in. I just click here and they say success. Um, so now I'm logging. Um, if I want to say this is a quick logging, if I want to change use a different way, um, so I can say switch account. Now you see a slightly different uh, logging. Uh, so in this case, uh, I can use one of the way that we do uh, with decentralized identifiers. I scan this QR code. Um, I can scan this QR code directly with iPhone's camera, or I can uh, use my data wallet to scan the QR code. Once I scan the code, um, it first it asks me, you know, to present one of the verifiable credentials. I present me as myself as admin. Uh, then go log in. So that's a very uh, quick demo. Uh, but if you didn't see very clearly what it is, uh, I, I will uh, explain later. So let's go back to the slides. So this is a very quick demo. Um, but it's in this short demo, we actually showcase a lot of things. I will explain one by one. So our block is actually building on top of the DIDs. Everything is on our block has a DID. For people that's not really uh, familiar with what DID is, uh, so here is a very quick, on the right side here is a very quick example of the W3C's DID format. It's starting with DID, uh, so that's equivalent to HTTP, right? And then second part is ABT, uh, that's our block's defined method. So you could you could see different methods like web or in the key or some some other methods here. So the beautiful part of the DID is uh, W3C DID is not trying to define like a, a, a one set of standards for what is a DID is. The instead is more like HTTP. Um, it is starting with DID and then you can define different method. And once you have a different method. Each of the uh, if each of the protocol, each of the method, they can define how to specify the identifiers. Right? This, the third part is identifiers, which is unique. So you will see DID, ABT, and different identifiers everywhere in our ecosystem. Um, 
one thing people probably noticed that uh, so uh, every user has a DID. For example, after I just log in, uh, there is a very familiar user box that user will see that that represent myself. And uh, the uh, user, people will see a slight different thing is on every of the user, you know, I logged in, uh, or you see somebody, some other users, you will see there's a user's DID appear here. That's a DID ABT, for example, this is a Z1, something like end it with RMS. So this is the unique, unique identifier to, uh, to identify uh, this particular account I use. So everybody, every user ID is a DID in our block and uh, users can have as many DIDs as they need. Uh, so for example, in our blocks design, every users, when they use different wallet, when they log into different account, we automatically uh, give them a different DID. Uh, so that is to say, even I use the exact same wallet for my, uh, for my cell phone, uh, when I go to a different website, uh, by default, it's going to give me a different ID. So this is uh, this uh, this improves the, the privacy uh, because uh, uh, if you use the same exact same ID into different um, uh, services, um, the attackers could you could you could leak who you are, uh, and attackers could um, try to find figure out profile you by looking into different uh, services. Right, some of the services are more secure, some are less secured. Uh, but with this kind of a automatically you know, change the DIDs design, uh, users' privacy automatically get protected because attackers uh, have no idea if some of the, those accounts are actually uh, all from you. Um, so this sounds to be a little bit kind of complex, but fortunately we have a digital wallet that automatically manages this for you. Uh, and you don't also don't need to, you don't need to remember what, what ID I use for this particular service. You also don't do not need to remember, you know, what's the password, or what is the security code for that specific account. Uh, all you need to do is you keep your wallet secure, and everything is done automatically for you. So this is the so every user ID is a DID. So other than the AI, every everything is a has a DID. That's also included the applications and the servers. Uh, as I just mentioned, that. Uh, our block is an uh, application platform. And so all those kind of applications are actually run on the basic part is our blocklet servers. So every blocklet server, every, you know, every instance of that block server or every instance of the software that is running, it all, it all has their own DID. Uh, so on the right side of the screenshot, I give one of the component that is uh, called a blocklet store. This is App Store alike uh, service that you know, users can find a different kind of application there. Uh, I highlighted that that for every different uh, applications, it has its own DID. Uh, if you are familiar with uh, managing management console, so the uh, right side is a, is a screenshot of our one of the server that are running the website. You can see the, the that server has its own DID. So basically, every everything is you identified by the DID. So that's the purpose of the DID, right? Decentralized identifiers. Uh, so extending to the applications and the servers, uh, we also extended the DID to the blockchain. So blockchain, a lot of people know that the blockchain have the blockchain address or called a blockchain account. Uh, so in our block, uh, every blockchain account are DIDs. Uh, so on the right side is a screenshot of the uh, block block explorers, that is blockchain explorers for the R plus blockchain. As you can see, uh, each of those account, uh, there's a DID and the, the DID itself contains some information. For example, in this case, this is this DID has a row type, which is called a rows account. That basically means this is a blockchain account. Uh, so this style is the R blocks blockchain address, uh, but a lot of people are familiar with Ethereum. So actually Ethereum styles is also acceptable using R plus DID as one of the DID. And so um, what you need to do is just to you know, specify DID ABT and uh, with an Ethereum address. And we will be able to identify, uh, to figure out this is the value of Ethereum address and we treat that as a DID. So just remember that all those 
uh, blockchain account uh, you use to you know store and say in cryptocurrencies and or the NFTs, they are all DID. So speaking of um, the blockchain, um, so one of the most you know uh, consumer friendly blockchain features is non fungible tokens and the tokens. Uh, the tokens is basically like Ethereum or like ABT. Uh, they are basically fungible tokens. And the non-fungible tokens, people are most familiar with this kind of digital arts. So in our block, all those tokens and non-fungible tokens, uh, they have DIDs. For example, for the token ID, if you go to the block explorer, you will find uh, our own token ABTs DID. So actually the this DID represent this is the class of the tokens. If you create a new class of tokens, it's going to have a different DIDs. So uh, in our block, if we want to tell if this is a certain class of the tokens, it's just DID. It's not just the name ticker. It's just a, uh, the name of the ticker. is just something that uh, for the user to easy to remember. Uh, but what really distinguishes them are the DIDs. And also same thing is for the non-fungible tokens. So non-fungible tokens, because each of the token is unique to others, uh, to you know, uh, to so, so that basically means each of the non-fungible tokens itself uh, has a DID. And the, here is a screenshot of I took to, for one of the non-fungible tokens um, with our block explorers. So as you can see, uh, this is a, a non-fungible token called a space stock uh, 236. Um, and in for underneath that space stock names, you can find a DID and uh, with this kind of blue picture and then this ID. So that's a that's a DID of this non-fungible token. But if you look at it down, um, you, can, you will see it also see it is created by and owned by. So that basically means, so this NFT is minted by, you know, the first DID. And now this DID, this space stocks NFT is owned by another DID. So basically this is created by somebody and this is owned by somebody else. Right. And below that, there is also there is the idea of the NFT factory. That's actually another, also that is a DID. Uh, so that you, you can see. So this gives you a sense that in our block, you know, how everything is a DID. A different user, different account, uh, different uh, digital asset, and the different kind of services. And each of them have DIDs. Uh, you might ask, how do we tell their difference? Uh, you can see this kind of, there is a uh, small, you know, uh, circles or this image before the ID. So this is this is a uh, image that we used to kind of decode uh, what's inside of the ID because in each of this DID, we give it different type. Uh, so uh, so that's a quick way to identify what different type of this, each of those DID. Is it to represent a user account or represent a applications or represent a blockchain, you know, uh, non-fungible token ID uh, or something else? Um, so I can go on all, on my own because everything, uh, because identifier is something is a, like a foundation of any software, right? Um, so identifier is also the foundation of almost our daily life. We need to uh, we need to use identifiers to tell uh, what is uh, what is apple, what is orange, what is this cup of tea, what is that, right? So identifier is everywhere. So that's actually the principle that when we use it to design our block. Uh, so we give each of the different identifiers in the whole art block ecosystem, their own DID. Uh, so that basically you can see the DID, decentralized identifier identity, we use that as a base layer. And on top of that, that base layer, so we can then uh, define different type of applications uh, around that. And that just makes things uh, way much simpler. So when we speak up a DID, um, we also, because DID identifier itself is just a kind of unique identifiers with certain format, but what really is makes the magic for uh, use of those DIDs, they are verifiable credentials. Um, uh, when a lot of uh, people get uh, new to the DID and the verifiable credentials, uh, when they see the credentials, they usually see on the left, which is a JSON LD format data. Uh, so in most of the website or most of the developer document, uh, when you see what is the decentral, uh, what is the verifiable credentials, and then you see this giant piece of the data, which is the JSON LD data, 
and people get lost, right? Get confused what, what exactly there. Um, so those kind of a JSON uh, LD data, that is actually what represented in the, uh, in the uh, uh, verifiable credentials from the software developer's point of view. But for the users, they don't have to know they don't have to know that they don't even need to you know understand that what kind of format or what kind of data there. But in state, a visual representation is the best. Uh, so our plots, very proper credentials, uh, are designed to be visual, user friendly, easy to understand, and ready to use. Uh, so on the right side, uh, there's two examples I just took from randomly from my you know wallet. Um, so, so this is gives the user ideas. Whenever you see something on our block, um, you see a, a picture, and then you say issued by somebody, and it's, it has its own ID. I, it has its own ID. You know, so that is basically a, a representation of a verifiable credentials, and underneath this verifiable credentials, you know, graphic representation. Actually, what underneath that is still the code on the left. Uh, but this code, uh, as a end user, you just don't need to. You just don't need to you know, know what exactly there. For each of those kind of verifiable credentials uh, in the wallet, if you really want to dig into what exactly it is, you can use the view source. Um, then it then the wallet is going to show you the uh, source of what that verifiable credential looks like. So verifiable credentials in the R block ecosystem is also everywhere. Uh, it has, it can, verifiable credentials um, can represent a lot of things. Uh, a typical uh, verifiable credential can be used are the digital certificates. Uh, we see those examples like the certificate of educations uh, everywhere in most of those examples. We also see this kind of certificate like a, uh, like a vac vaccine information certificates. Um, and here I give some example is one is uh, an email. Because for example, a lot of user, when you get log into some certain service, it's going to send you the email verification uh, again, again. Uh, and uh, in our block platform, uh, we do this too. But instead of every time when you go to a different service, it's going to let you send you an email to let you verify uh, your email. Uh, we just give you uh, the service just going to issue a verifiable credentials to prove that this email is valid, is verified. So the next time when you go to another service uh, in our block and uh, it needs you, you know, to prove that you actually have a valid email. Uh, what you need to do is just present this verifiable credentials and then the service know that, okay, this email address is verified. So I don't need to send another uh, verification um, later again, right? Yeah, another uh, typical examples for the verifiable credentials can be used as a ticket, right? As an event ticket. Um, so people who attended our, our blocks uh, developer conference before, online develop, developer conference before know that um, we use a verifiable credentials and NFTs uh, as uh, the the event ticket. Uh, so, uh, so the verifiable credentials design can be customized. So that basically means for the any app de developers, if you have some idea you want to de design different way, make the verifiable credentials looks differently, you can have use your imagination, use your creativities to design um, what it looks like. Um, so, uh, so this is this is already some kind of uh, examples here, like a certificate, like a ticket. You just use your imaginations, and we have tools for you to quickly design all these kind of templates for what the ver verifiable credentials should looks like. So, actually, this is one of the hacking tracks that I'm going to suggest for uh, anybody who wants to build uh, on our block. Uh, you can, if you're not a developers. Uh, but you can, but you're good designers. You can actually design different templates for the verifiable credentials to make the verifiable credentials kind of more easy, user friendly and more like the real real world use cases. I think that is also an uh, important part of how to turn the uh, verifiable credentials uh, useful. Um, uh, very important, uh, verifiable credentials are blocks. Uh, community is got a proof of ownership. For example, this is one of the verifiable credentials. Uh, is basically say uh, I'm a owner of my personal web, 
So this personal web is an application uh, and it has its own server. It's running on the, uh, on the internet. And, and how do I prove that I own that service? Uh, so now I have, a, I have a verifiable credentials and this verifiable credentials proves that I'm the owner of that website. Uh, but so uh, so what is used for this ownership? Because our, the whole R block system is basically designed as an automated system. So when I want to access to one of the service, uh, for example, my, my personal website, um, for example, I want to install a software there. I need to. I want to upgrade upgrade something there, or I just need to kind of uh, allow somebody else to be one of the admin to my service. Uh, the system will not allow me to do that until it knows that I'm actually own that. Right? Uh, so in the traditional way, you usually you have some kind of a scary, you know, user password or some certificate to show or some physical ID you go, can go somewhere to do. Uh, but in the R block world, all you need to do is just to present uh, verifiable credentials that uh, say you are the owner. Uh, we call this type this, this is one of the type of the very formal credentials that our block used uh, everywhere, right? Anybody who use our block, and uh, you probably didn't notice that you are using very formal credentials, but actually you're using that everywhere. Uh, so in my quick demo, when I use it to log in into the our blocks website, um, you probably see that in my wallet, I select one of the, I call the passport, one of the passport, that password is admin. Uh, so that is uh, that is also a verifiable credentials. Uh, so that leads to another type of verifiable credentials. Uh, that is uh, uh, called a row and access management. So in that case, uh, I'm not the owner, um, but I have this row called I'm admin. Uh, so usually it's the owner can give uh, the other users uh, different type of roles and access control. So with that, this kind of a verifiable credentials, so the system we're going to automatically allow you to access certain things. Of course, there are very uh, user-friendly, very fabric credentials that is the non-fungible tokens. The non-fungible tokens in our block, uh, they, are, uh, they are, we use a very fabric credentials data format as a payload of the non-fungible tokens. Uh, so uh, every, every non-fungible tokens, the content inside, uh, you can prove a lot of things. For example, prove the originality. Uh, you can you can prove you know the, have the signature of the authors to that digital content. So that's you know open up a lot of opportunities to for artists or for the IP ownership to you know define different things into the uh, into those kind of uh, creativities. So since we have in our plot the the, the most you know, uh, popular and used. You know, very popular credentials uh, is a rules and access management. Uh, we give this type of VC a specific name called a, uh, called a passport. Uh, if you use any of those R blocks you know, platform, you will see this passport again and again. Uh, because we actually build, have a building uh, identity and access management system building in R block. Uh, so this is completely based on the DID and the, the VCs. Uh, so I give this is one example uh, screenshot here. You can see this is a typical IAM looks um, uh, user interface. User it, it, it typically manages how many users you have in your system, and you can you know you can you can control the access and the rows for different users. Uh, so each of the users here in this kind of user system uh, has use a DID. We use the DID to identify them, and. Uh, a typical, you know, uh, passport is we give them different type of a passport. For example, the owner itself is a passport, and the admin role is a passport, and a typical uh, is a is member passport. So that gives the users um, uh, different access right to the system. So the identity and access management system is uh, this, this this concept sounds scary, but this is a very common used software component for any for any system. From a very simple one like it give you a username, password, or a login with Google's, and to a very complex one like enterprise version of the IAM. Uh, so uh, it's basically the most important component to manage how your user um, going to be able to access different. Uh, different type of information and different type of data to your system. 
Um, so Arpaloft probably is one of the first uh, company that have a building um, IAM system completely based on the DID and the VC. And uh, we have we have we have this kind of system for over three years. So um, so we have a lot of user all, all every users that in our blog actually is managed by this type of IAM. So um, that is a very quick demo uh, and the explanation of how we use um, DIDs and the VC. As you can see, the DID and the VCs are everywhere, right? You you might ask. Since I have so many DIDs and so many VCs, it looks like good, but how do I manage them, right? To be able to kind of a security manage those DID and verify the credentials, especially for example, um, how do I know I need to present this DID, use this DID and present this VC to some certain service, right? So that need uh, application to do that. Uh, so that's, uh, we have this component called a DID, did wallet. Uh, Data Wallet itself is a consumer friendly applications. Uh, anybody can download that from the iOS app store or Google Play stores. Uh, so it's available worldwide except, um, except China. <clears throat> so, uh, and uh, uh, it, it also have a, we also have a browser extension version that you can use as extension on the, uh, like a, a Chrome, Google Chrome, you know, uh, Edge uh, or the Safari. And uh, for the user who do not want to install any software, we also have a web version. So they're basically, the user interface looks identical and all those kind of, uh, they, they're actually doing the same thing. Uh, the digital, uh, the data wallet uh, is the identity wallet and a crypto wallet in one. Uh, so identity wallet basically means this wallet is used to store your identity card, your verifiable credentials, all your different IDs. And a crypto wallet is a lot of people, uh, any user more, especially people into the crypto know that is, is that that used to, that's our store, the private key of your blockchain account, blockchain accounts. So data wallet is a crypto wallet and identity wallet in one. So with this wallet, you not only manage your cryptocurrencies, uh, it also manage your digital identities and verified credentials we mentioned. Uh, so we have a data wallet since year 2019. We are probably one of the first uh, uh, identity wallet and the crypto wallet in one in the market. Uh, so for anybody who are interested in uh, data wallet, you can go to you know didwallet.io to uh, to install one and see you know more use cases here. Uh, so for anybody who want to develop in our block platform, uh, you do need this uh, data wallet because um, you use this, this wallet is a very important and a base component that you use to, to kind of manage your DID and use that for access all different block, our block services. For the developers, uh, um, we have a data wallet playground. Uh, so the data wallet playground is actually one of the powerful tool to showcase what exactly I can use the, the wallet for different use cases. There's hundred different use cases in this Data wallet playground. You can, uh, for example, I just took, have a screenshot that pick the different things. For example, for the um, those are basically for the showcase um, in the when you use a wallet to access to a different applications. You know uh, what kind of a access you can, what kind of a workflow you can do. Uh, for example, this is the present something, prove you have prove you have some certain DID. And uh, and also we have specific sections for the uh, verifiable different type of verifiable credentials. How to kind of accept one of the verifiable credentials? How to uh, <clears throat> how to you know um, verify certain verifiable credentials? And uh, in some certain cases, you need to apply uh, the uh, for a verif verifiable credentials sent to you. Um, so and we also have the, the a few test cases to. So for example, like a fake email VC and a fake issuer VC. So basically that is kind of a user cases for you to some bad service, try to uh, try to let you you know, present something that is fake and how to use a wallet. You can see uh, how the wallet identified that uh, there is something that is up here. looks like it is something for real, but actually it cannot be verified. Uh, so the wallet playground is for any coders who want to hacking our block, uh, our, our block, especially for those kind of uh, protocol level and how to use that in your applications. 
uh, is a very good source because everything uh, here is open sourced and you can also have self-host version. You can run this playground in your local box to try to understand what exactly is doing. And uh, most of the code that we use for all those kind of different uh, playground uh, scenarios are basically you can copy paste those code. They are cop code snip, snip, uh, they're coded uh, clips. You can just uh, say, hey, I want to have these kind of similar features. I can just a copy from the playground and then change that in your own project. So this is a good way to start a hack. So um, and since we have this playground, you will uh, realize that to use the DID and the, to you to present the verifiable Brazilian who's you actually um, from your wallet, you manage all those DIDs and the verifiable credentials, and then you um, connect that to your own applications. Um, but how do uh, the wallet connect to the uh, to your own applications or connect to R plus applications? Um, so we have a framework for that. We call this DID Connect. So DID Connect is actually uh, extended protocol uh, to define uh, for the developers to use a DID. Uh, and the very powerful credentials in um, in di many different scenarios uh, in your own applications. Um, so for simple, the DID Connect itself uh, is just connecting uh, different applications uh, with your DID and the, and a user wallet in this to manage for different things. Like for example, sometimes sometime you need to have a signatures from your DID. Sometimes you need to provide some certain data. For example, you, you present a verifiable credentials to present that, okay, I own something. Um, Sometimes you need to kind of prove that I, okay, prove I have, have ownership of something. And uh, all of those kind of different use cases. Uh, a typical user interface from the DID Connect uh, is, for example, um, on the left side is from the application side. Um, it asks you to connect your wallet, or uh, so you, you see this example, I quickly use that one of the previous used account to quickly connect that uh, to, uh, to our website, right? On the wallet side, you will see whenever you receive a DID Connect, you are going to see this kind of screen. So this is going to ask you, tell you this particular application uh, going to ask you for some certain information. Uh, and uh, if the application ask you to present some VCs is also going to automatically find out what <clears throat> what are the valid VC in your wallet you can present to. You can select to, to different VCs to present. <clears throat> on, the right, on the right screenshot, I give this, this example is when I log into our own website. Um, you saw in the demo, I picked the admin, uh, very proper credentials to to log in as admin, but actually I have multiple different um, uh, passport uh, that that I can sometimes use for test. For example, I can I can log into the website as a guest, uh, as like a, <clears throat> like as a content creators. So I can uh, I can use I can see the different when I switch the different roles to us uh, to our service. The good news is if you want to use the DID Connect in your applications. Um, uh, you don't need to write a lot of code. Uh, so there's two different way to do that. There is no code way. Uh, if you want to build some, something with our no code tools, you don't need to do anything, right? So if you use a no code tool and you um, you have the DID Connect building, everything is already there. You don't need to write the one, <clears throat> one single thing. So your application is automatically using the DID and the VCs uh, across the board. Um, it's just like magic, right? If you want to, want to do that with a code way, uh, you usually only need a, a few lines of code, probably three to four different lines of code. And uh, then you have you know, your full capability to deal with uh, the DID and the VCs uh, with this framework. And uh, um, if you want to write the code, we also have a tool that generated the scaffold. And I'm going to uh, demo this tomorrow. Uh, so you, as you can see, for developers, if you want to, want to build a full application with the code, you just need to use our scaffold called a create blocklet. Um, probably one command line is auto is complete generate a complete application scaffold that includes the full DID Connect integration there. So you basically get an empty application that is but already have the access uh, have the full DID Connect uh, used there. 
Uh, like the playground, we also have a uh, DID Connect has its own website. So this website and the major part of this website is the playground. Uh, so that playground basically give you some ideas to how to how this works. So I already uh, explained. Uh, so DID uh, Connect is the user interface uh, is pretty straightforward and simple. And uh, we just make this for the developers convenient to quickly use that. Of course, we have a very comprehensive SDKs uh, for the user who want to dig into the details of uh, how to use the DID uh, in different way. For example, a developers could could do not like our default user interface. They want to uh, they they don't want they don't like this this user face user interface. They can completely customize and build different user interfaces. But in this case, they need to use a SDKs API to do that, right? And uh, uh, you might see that so we already integrate the DID Connect with a, a traditional um, user login method like the OAuth. You can you can also connect with uh, Google and use Google or use GitHub or use Passkey um, to log in, and that is uh, that is a part of the uh, DID Connect. That basically means if you want your application not only support you know create a user with the DID, but also with the traditional method, uh, we already integrate that, you, so you don't need to do anything. All you need to do is just to do a few of those configurations. Uh, for example, config how to uh, use like a Google logins uh, service, and, and then you have them integrated. So that's the DID Connect. And uh, with the DID wallet that you manage all those kind of uh, your private key, your account, your VCs, with the DID Connect, you can use your DID in your applications. Uh, so people might ask if I have some certain data that related to that DID, where do I store? Uh, so that's how the DID spaces come. Um, this is the important component, DID spaces uh, coming. So DID spaces is a data storage service for DITs. Uh, so we have a dedicated website for that. That's that's didspace.com. Uh, so the data space uh, is a is a personal data space service for um, for each of the individuals, um, and the the different from a lot of the traditional personal data service that is use uh, your email or user pass password for the login. So we use the DIDs. You have a, so all those data spaces, they are, you know, they are identified by the DIDs and the, the to access those data, data spaces uh, is not password, username, password driven, it's instead of the DIDs and also present the verifiable credentials to prove that you are the owner or you have certain access right. You're going to be able to access these data spaces. So the data spaces itself um, is, a, we have a, a very important concept that is, uh, think that the inv individuals is the point of the uh, integration. That base means any service that you use in our block, the data um, or belongs to the users. The, the data belongs to that certain DID. No matter you know uh, who provides this service, your data are not on different services, you know, data storage silos. Instead, all those data belongs to the user. That is you, right? Uh, so you, know, you as a user, you might use many different types of service, different services, and all those services are in the, are your data are not in different service silos. Your data are under your own data spaces. Uh, so that uh, makes this, you know, amazing user experience uh, because uh, the, uh, it, it, it has better data privacy and, uh, and you can share the data among different services all at your will and not by the other's decisions. And if one of the applications want to use um, the data from the other applications, um, so it's not up to others decide, it's actually up to your decide. If you decide this is my data, I want to give this to another service and then you can do it. Or you think this is my data, I do not want to share this to anybody else and you know, nobody else can make this decision for you. So the data spaces is is is, is um uh is, so is 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 portable. Uh, that so data uh, uh, at the end users you can get a data space easily from our you know our uh, data space.com as one of the spaces that we provided for 
users. But if you don't like it, you don't want to have to, to have this shared instance. You can install your own deep space servers, and then you can you can either have your uh, server that hosts your own data space. You can even install the data space on your own NAS own servers, and then you get a you get a uh, you get your own data space that is completely managed, uh, you know, at your you know control. And uh, because they are all data space protocols, so that basically means from the other applications, it's no different. It you, your data just kind of a, you you just kind of move your data from from one place to the others, um, and the uh, but they are completely compatible. Uh, so that basically means we enable the seamless data portability, and uh, you can user can have like complete control over their data. Um, so so in in simple, this space is a self sovereign data. And that is ready to use. And uh, uh, we are, as I just explained, we're human centric. And uh, so the data space could be a cloud service uh, that the end consumer users can just use it without thinking about what exactly it is. Uh, it can be self hosted, that is, for any geeks or anybody who needed kind of extensive security and control, you can self host a data space uh, on your own you know, environment. And uh, so there's an extraordinary data possibility when you switch from like a cloud service data space to a self-host data space or switch or kind of mix use them. Um, so the data uh, portability is amazing. And for the end, uh, for the application that you use your data space, uh, that will not tell the difference. They just feel this is your, that's your data space. And, and the data space part, we try to spot the open standard so that every identifier, every access control is by DID and VCs. And uh, the data space is, is we, we win the My Data Operators in 2023 award. So My Data is the organization that is encouraging the self sovereign data and the data portability. And we are also a member of the international data space members. Uh, uh, so, um, so the data space itself is just a protocol. Uh, so the data itself is not IPFS, it's not any of those kind of a decentralized storage. Instead, data space is a protocol and an implementation. The real data is actually stored on the node uh, that is running the data space. So it could be the file system of that system. It could be a NAS service devices, or it could be any virtual file system that your you know, data space is running. Um, so, for example, for the public cloud service version is actually backed by S3 uh, or Google Cloud Storage. Of course, so for somebody who want to hacking on data spaces, it's totally possible to have the decentralized storage system like IPFS or Firecons as the real storage places for your data, right? Just remember that the data space itself uh, is a protocol and a service and the real data is still stored at the places that uh, is spot. So yeah, so that's today's presentation is all about give um, audience an uh, idea, um, you know, what our block, how our block use uh, DID and the VCs. So a quick recap. So our block and the DID, so our block provide a suite of frameworks and tools for building applications with DID and the VCs. And everything here is real and it's already you know, playable and useful. And the DID and, and the VC in our block is not those kind of a code or you know, piece of data that you don't understand. It's something that is visual, that is you know, user-friendly. And uh, we have comprehensive framework and tools that you can guide you through um, how it works. So uh, in overview, our block, uh, is an application platform that enables decentralized identities, technology, and self sovereign data. Uh, so this is specifically from the identity and the self sovereign data side point of view. So our block has different layers, as you can see on the on the on the ground up. We have these identity layers. You see all those DID VCs and the components I just mentioned, like DID Wallet, DID Connect, and we also have a DID Naming Service that I didn't cover here. Um, <clears throat> I didn't cover today. And on top of that, um, 
we have storage that we mentioned that is the data spaces. And we also have some certain other components like uh, the computing part that is a, that is basically the application framework that we use, we call it blocklets. And we also um, have the blockchain support that is can, can, can put different things on the blockchain. And on top of that, uh, there is a reusable components and these reusable components can be created into different applications, right? So this is the big picture of our block. So in simple, our block is a platform to help developers to build applications, decentralized applications or blockchain applications easier because we have providing a lot of kind of reusable components. Um, um, uh, but on the underneath of that, uh, we are big players and you know, supporters of the DID because we use the DID as important layers. And uh, um, so we basically have the decentralized identifier identity as important layers of the whole R block ecosystem, right? Every identifiers in R block is a WCC compatible DIDs. This include your user account and blockchain addresses and all the verifications in our block is through the verified credentials. Uh, whenever you want to access a node, access some certain resource, uh, log into some system. Um, so it's not using username and password for that. The instead you use, use verifiable credentials. So the verifiable credentials is based on the cryptographic signatures. Um, so uh, you, you, for example, if you prove that you are that owner, you have that DID, it's not just to you say you are DID, you have DID, it's going to run Thanks through this kind of cryptographic signatures to prove that you are actually the owner of that DID. Whenever you need to present a verified credentials, it's also going to give uh, ask you to present that by based on providing a signature on the fly. The signature automatically has uh, uh, all those kind of security challenges like the the challenge and the different mechanism to to avoid like the replay attack, all those different attacks. Fortunately, as a developer, you don't need to understand all of those because uh, uh, because the infrastructure part we have built, like the DID Connect, DID Wallet, um, and all those protocols are auto already automatically do all of those, you know, and the lower stuff for you. You just to kind of treat this as something that you can ready to use. So that's basically our principle. We we try to implement this you know, really complex and advanced uh, decentralized identity system as a layer, but instead, but instead let you touch into those all those kind of details of those kind of uh, technical details. We provide the rich and comprehensive tools and frameworks uh, for builders and developers to use. And uh, yeah, so our blocks are ready for build. Uh, everything I have shown here, they are, you know, they are ready to use. And uh, so this is today's, uh, pretty much the today's talk. And uh, um, um, I, tomorrow I'm going to more kind of, is, so, so today's is mostly kind of a, uh, give you a sense um, what what our blocks looks like and how, you know, how we, um, um, what our block looks like, how, how all those kind of application looks like. And the tomorrow is more kind of like um, the demos of building, how to build stuff, um, how, to, uh, how to use those tools to create applications, and especially how to use this kind of no coding tools, how you use the DIDs and uh, the DID Connect, how you use the consumer VCs or create a VCs, and, uh, or how do you design uh, a very powerful credentials, you know, for example, the certificate, those kind of a ticket, how we have you design that, uh, how to integrate that into your applications. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to showcase all those tools and all those code uh, to create a full application. And today is just to give you a sense of what it looks like. Um, I will check, is there any questions? And um, so uh, Long Wen asked one, one of the questions, the verified presidential is built up on the DID, correct? Yes, because verified credentials, um, uh, DID itself is just the identifiers. So verified credentials is basically like the, the paired important you know, technology that come together with the DIDs. Um, so um, yeah, so they're, 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 they're strongly related in time. You can, you can think in that, 
uh, verifiable credentials, you know, um, is built up built on top of DIDs. So does DID connect to get rid of TOS already? Um, you don't need to worry about it, what is TOS, but actually we use that underneath. So DID connected itself is built on top of that. So um, that's just those, those technical details you don't need to worry about. Um, so I think that's pretty much, and uh, anybody have any questions? Uh, is it like, is there any prerequisite about the programming language, whether it is like Python, TypeScript, JavaScript, something like this? So right now our libraries, uh, so there's two ways. Right now our libraries are uh, mostly with the TypeScript or JavaScript. So if you are using Node.js, uh, all those kind of libraries are ready to use. Uh, but if you are using Python or some other language, and unfortunately, we do not have the library that is for for that yet. Uh, but those protocols uh, are language, um, you know, agnostic. Uh, but in this case, you you have to you have to based on the protocol and hacking and build that yourself. Um, we also have no code tools. Uh, that is the not needed code, and it's just like a runtime framework support. Okay. Thank you. So there is a question for in the prize can data space of the employee be transferred back to the employers when she or he leave the company. So that's a very interesting, a good questions. So, so I think this is a represent a different way for um, <clears throat> for the what what is in the in a self storage and data storage and uh, uh, so have to what is the ownership of each of the data in this case for example. Uh, if you use data space in enterprise setting and the some of the data you know belongs to the enterprise, so that data should never come to your data space. So if that data specific data is is for the company only, uh, so that should live on the company's data space. That will never come to your data space, right? Uh, but but for example, if you use enterprise you know, application, there might still might some of the data that belongs to you. For example. Your personal identify, uh, uh, your personal identity related information. When you use the enterprise software, you might share some of your personal data uh, in the corporate. Um, but once you leave the company, you no longer authorize those data to the company, and uh, you do do not need to ask them to delete or do anything because those data are on your data spaces. You just uh, you know remove the access. Uh, your data space to the enterprise software and then it loads that access. And of course, if you leave the company and the company re revoke your access to uh, the company vacation and the company data space, and you no longer have that access to uh, the company's data space. So this is, I think this is, this concept is, is very much different than today's software application that all the data belongs to, to kind of one party. And then you just have the access or you need to kind of a copy, make a copy or export the data. No, nope. yeah. For China, do we have to self-host the data wallet to do a cross-country application? Uh, for China, that, that's, a, that's not a technical question, but that's rather, that's the kind of, kind of legal question because Chinese government does not like crypto and cryptographic stuff. And uh, it has a ridiculous loss for the, even for the algorithm of the of the cryptographic, and uh, so we as a startup, uh, it, it, it we really don't bother to 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 comply with those, and so so we basically say that we we don't support that. So that's the easy thing. Um, so however, the whole DID and those are, they are they're just technology. So if our builder want to build that, uh, you can still actually everything is still working as long as you can. Uh, Set it up. I think that's pretty much for the questions. Yeah, and if anyone has additional follow up questions, I went ahead and I put the the link in the chat to the Arc Block Discord, so you guys can continue the discussion there, and. Um, 
and yeah, just any questions generally, let me know. But um, yeah, that was great, Robert. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. For anybody, yeah, yeah just uh, have questions, just go to the Discord channels. Mm -hmm. And we also have a dedicated forums. That's, so that Q&A is, uh, uh, so that's basically uh, not the real time, but to, we always reply for the thread there. So if you have any specific questions, just post there. Awesome. Sounds great. All right. Thank you. All thanks, right. everyone. Thank you so much. Mm. All right. Thanks, everyone, thanks. for coming. Bye-bye.